General Packet Radio Service is a packet-oriented mobile data service on the 2G and 3G cellular communication systems global system for mobile communications. GPRS was originally standardized by European Telecommunications Standards Institute in response to the earlier CDPD and iMode packet switched cellular technologies. It is now maintained by the third generation partnership project. GPRS usage is typically charged based on volume of data transferred, contrasting with circuit switched data, which is usually billed per minute of connection time. Usage above the bundle cap is either charged per megabyte or disallowed. GPRS is a best effort service, implying variable throughput and latency that depend on the number of other users sharing the service concurrently, as opposed to circuit switching, where a certain quality of service is guaranteed during the connection. In 2G systems, GPRS provides data rates of 56 a Euro 114 kbit second. 2G cellular technology combined with GPRS is sometimes described as 2.5G, that is, a technology between the second and third generations of mobile telephony. It provides moderate speed data transfer, by using unused time division multiple access channels in, for example, the GSM system. GPRS is integrated into GSM release 97 and newer releases. Technical Overview the GPRS core network allows 2G, 3G and WCDMA mobile networks to transmit IP packets to external networks such as the Internet. The GPRS system is an integrated part of the GSM network switching subsystem. Services offered, GPRS extends the GSM packet circuit switch data capabilities and makes the following services possible, SMS messaging and broadcasting, always on Internet access, Multimedia Messaging Service, Push to Talk Over Cellular, Instant Messaging and Presence Euro Wireless Village, Internet Applications for Smart Devices through Wireless Application Protocol, Point-to-Point -point Service, Internetworking with the Internet, Point-to-Multipoint Service, Point-to-Multipoint Multiquest and Point-to-Multipoint Group Calls, if SMS over GPRS is used, an SMS transmission speed of about 30 SMS messages per minute may be achieved. This is much faster than using the ordinary SMS over GSM, whose SMS transmission speed is about 6 to 10 SMS messages per minute. Protocols supported, GPRS supports the following protocols, Internet Protocol. In practice, built-in mobile browsers use IPv4 since IPv6 was not yet popular. Point-to-point -point protocol. In this mode PPP is often not supported by the mobile phone operator but if the mobile is used as a modem to the connected computer, PPP is used to tunnel IP to the phone. This allows an IP address to be assigned dynamically to the mobile equipment. X25 Connections This is typically used for applications like wireless payment terminals, although it has been removed from the standard. X25 can still be supported over PPP or even over IP, but doing this requires either a network-based router to perform encapsulation or intelligence built into the end device terminal. For example, user equipment. When TCP IP is used, each phone can have one or more IP addresses allocated. GPRS will store and forward the IP packets to the phone even during handover. The TCP handles any packet loss. Hardware. Devices supporting GPRS are divided into three classes, Class A, can be connected to GPRS service and GSM service, using both at the same time. Such devices are known to be available today. Class B, can be connected to GPRS service and GSM service, but using only one or the other at a given time. During GSM service, GPRS service is suspended and then resumed automatically after the GSM service is concluded. Most GPRS mobile devices are Class B Class C are connected to either GPRS service or GSM service. Must be switched manually between one or the other service. A true Class A device may be required to transmit on two different frequencies at the same time, and thus will need two radios. To get around this expensive requirement, a GPRS mobile may implement the dual transfer mode feature. 
a DTM-capable mobile may use simultaneous voice and packet data, with the network coordinating to ensure that it is not required to transmit on two different frequencies at the same time. Such mobiles are considered pseudo-class A, sometimes referred to as simple class A. Some networks support DTM since 2007. USB 3G GPRS modems use a terminal-like interface over USB 1.1, 2.0 and later, data formats V42 bis, and RFC 1144 and some models have connector for external antenna. Modems can be added as cards or external USB devices which are similar in shape and size to a computer mouse, or nowadays more like a pen drive. Addressing a GPRS connection is established by reference to its access point name. The APN defines the services such as wireless application protocol access, short message service, multimedia messaging service, and for Internet communication services such as email and World Wide Web access. In order to set up a GPRS connection for a wireless modem, a user must specify an APN, optionally a username and password and very rarely an IP address, all provided by the network operator. Coding schemes and speeds, the upload and download speeds that can be achieved in GPRS depend on a number of factors such as, the number of BTS TDMA time slots assigned by the operator, the channel encoding is used. The maximum capability of the mobile device expressed as a GPRS multi-slot class, multiple access schemes, the multiple access methods used in GSM with GPRS are based on frequency division duplex and TDMA. During a session, a user is assigned to one pair of uplink and downlink frequency channels. This is combined with time domain statistical multiplexing. That is, packet mode communication, which makes it possible for several users to share the same frequency channel. The packets have constant length, corresponding to a GSM time slot. The downlink uses first come first serve packet scheduling, while the uplink uses a scheme very similar to reservation aloha. This means that slotted aloha is used for reservation inquiries during a contention phase, and then the actual data is transferred using dynamic TDMA with first come first served. Channel encoding The channel encoding process in GPRS consists of two steps. First, a cyclic code is used to add parity bits which are also referred to as the block check sequence, followed by coding with a possibly punctured convolutional code. The coding schemes CS1 to CS4 specify the number of parity bits generated by the cyclic code and the puncturing rate of the convolutional code. In coding schemes CS1 through CS3, the convolutional code is of rate one half, that is each input bit is converted into two coded bits. In coding schemes CS2 and CS3, the output of the convolutional code is punctured to achieve the desired code rate. In coding scheme CS4, no convolutional coding is applied. The following table summarizes the options. Note that the bit rates do not include the overhead incurred by channel coding and the RLC and MAC headers. The least robust, but fastest, coding scheme is available near a base transceiver station while the most robust coding scheme is used when the mobile station is further away from a BTS. Using the CS4 it is possible to achieve a user speed of 20.0 kbits per time slot. However, using this scheme the cell coverage is 25% of normal. CS1 can achieve a user speed of only 8.0 kbits per time slot, but has 98% of normal coverage. Newer network equipment can adapt the transfer speed automatically depending on the mobile location. In addition to GPRS, there are two other GSM technologies which deliver data services, circuit switch data and high speed circuit switch data. In contrast to the shared nature of GPRS, these instead establish a dedicated circuit. Some applications such as video calling may prefer HSCSD especially when there is a continuous flow of data between the endpoints. The following table summarizes some possible configurations of GPRS and circuit switch data services. Multislot class. The multislot class determines the speed of data transfer available in the upper link and downlink directions. 
it is a value between 1 to 45 which the network uses to allocate radio channels in the upper link and down link direction. Multislot class with values greater than 31 are referred to as high multislot classes. A multislot allocation is represented as, for example, 5 plus 2. The first number is the number of downlink time slots and the second is the number of uplink time slots allocated for use by the mobile station. A commonly used value is class 10 for many GPRS e GPRS mobiles which uses a maximum of 4 time slots in downlink direction and 2 time slots in uplink direction. However simultaneously a maximum number of 5 simultaneous time slots can be used in both uplink and downlink. The network will automatically configure the for either 3 plus 2 or 4 plus 1 operation depending on the nature of data transfer. Some high-end mobiles, usually also supporting UMTS, also support GPRS Edge Multislot Class 32. According to 3GPPTS 45.002, Table B2, mobile stations of this class support 5 time slots in downlink and 3 time slots in uplink with a maximum number of 6 simultaneously used time slots. If data traffic is concentrated in downlink direction the network will configure the connection for 5 plus 1 operation. When more data is transferred in the uplink the network can at any time change the constellation to 4 plus 2 or 3 plus 3. Under the best reception conditions, that is when the best edge modulation and coding scheme can be used, 5 time slots can carry a bandwidth of 5 times 59.2 kbits equals 296 kbits. In upper link direction, 3 time slots can carry a bandwidth of 3 times 59.2 kbits equals 177.6 kbits. Multislot classes for GPRS e GPRS. Attributes of a multislot class, each multislot class identifies the following, the maximum number of time slots that can be allocated on upper link, the maximum number of time slots that can be allocated on downlink, the total number of time slots which can be allocated by the network to the mobile, the time needed for the MIS to perform adjacent cell signal level measurement and get ready to transmit, the time needed for the MIS to get ready to transmit the time needed for the MIS to perform adjacent cell signal level measurement and get ready to receive, the time needed for the MIS to get ready to receive. The different multislot class specification is detailed in the Annex B of the 3GPP Technical Specification 45.002, Usability, the maximum speed of a GPRS connection offered in 2003 was similar to a modem connection in an analog wire telephone network, about 32 euro 40 kbits, depending on the phone used. Latency is very high. Round trip time is typically about 600 euro 700 milliseconds and often reaches ones. GPRS is typically prioritized lower than speech, and thus the quality of connection varies greatly. Devices with latency RTT improvements are generally available. Also, Network upgrades of features are available with certain operators. With these enhancements the active round trip time can be reduced, resulting in significant increase in application level throughput speeds. See also, Code Division Multiple Access, Enhanced Data Rates for GSM Evolution, Universal Mobile Telephone System, GPRS Core Network, Sub Network Dependent Convergence Protocol, IP Multimedia Subsystem, High-speed downlink packet access, cellular data communication protocol, list of device bandwidths, references. External links, 3GPPAT command set for user equipment, GPRS security information, free GPRS resources, GSM World, the Trade Association for GSM and GPRS network operators. Palo Wireless GPRS Resource Center. GPRS Attach and PDP Context Activation Sequence Diagram